Hi and welcome back and now we move on to chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. We've seen in chapter 6 the seals, six seals that were opened. The first four, um, you know, releasing the four horsemen and from there on with uh, the other seals we saw the effects and the impacts that were being caused on the earth. Now chapter 7 begins with angelic activity. It says, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on earth or sea or against any tree. So right at the outset, we are told of four angels who are standing, it says the four corners of the earth, and I believe it's the north, the south, the east, and the west, holding back the judgment that is going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In other words, from every direction. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with, a, with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice, to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea saying do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. We are then given a glimpse of a fifth angel and this angel has the seal of the living God. In other words, he has a seal and he tells the other angels, it says hold on don't cause destruction until the seals has been placed on the servants of the Lord. Now we're going to see who the servants of the Lord are because the next verse itself says, and I heard the number of the sealed 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. So this angel has requested that the seal of God is going to be placed on the forehead of the 144,000. And until those seals are placed, no destruction is going to come on the earth. Now, these are men who have been set apart for such a time as this. And these men are going to be witnessing and preaching the gospel across the globe so that many will come to know Christ. There's going to be a great harvest and it is interesting between the sixth seal and the seventh seal there is a pause. There is a harvest coming through and these men are going to be going across the globe and leading thousands, millions back to Christ. Now, who are these 144,000? So let's take a look at them. When we went through the seven churches, those who overcame in the church of Philadelphia, there was a promise that was given to them that they would carry the name of their God, the name where they would stay, and the name of Christ. In a similar fashion, we see the seal of God coming on the 144,000. Now, who are these 144,000? Number one is that they are called the children of Israel. In chapter 7, verse 4, it says that they are the children of God. They are the servants of the Lord. Number two is that they have specific tribal affiliation. From every tribe of Israel, we see a 12,000. So 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from Reuben, from Gad, from Asher, from Naphtali, from Manasseh, from Simeon, from Levi, from Issachar, from Zebulun, from Joseph, and you know, from Benjamin, they were sealed. So each one has a tribal aff uh, affiliation. And we also need to compare in um, chapter 14 and verse 1, it says how they, they will be protected. Because it says, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. So they are protected 
through the tribulation. There is a supernatural protection over them and none of them are going to lose their lives. The same 144,000 who were sealed in chapter 7 are found in chapter 14. So there, there is protection over them. We, we also see in Revelations 14 that they were celibate. It says that they were not defiled by women. They were pure. They were set apart for such a time as this. It says that they were virgins. You know, they, they were not married. And these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. In other words, their hearts and lives were dedicated to follow the Lamb of God. It reminds me, even, you know, when um, Elijah thought that he was the only prophet that everyone was lost, God said, no, I have prepared a remnant. And God is releasing this remnant so that those on the earth can get saved and there's going to be a great revival. And you know, so they are the beginning of the great harvest. That's, that's what it means when it says that they are the first fruits of God and to the Lamb, that they are the beginning of the great harvest. And they are marked by integrity and faithfulness. They are, to they are integrous, they are faithful, and they will be out there so effectively bringing the Word of God and leading people to Christ. And these 144,000, they also have a special calling from the Lord. You know, they have a special calling and a special anointing from the Lord. And until their assignment is over, they will not be taken to heaven. They seem to be translated into heaven once their assignment is over. And when they have finished their assignment, Revelations 14 verses 1 to 3 talks to us about a song that they are singing. And it says, I heard a voice from heaven like a row of many waters, like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And look at verse 3, and they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures, before the elders. They were in heaven singing a new song. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. So they had a special song that they were singing. And I believe this is a song that they were rejoicing of the harvest, that in the midst of tribulation that was going on on the earth, that they could sing these songs and say, you know, this is what the Lord did. This is glory to Him. And because only they could sing it, because only they had experienced what they experienced. Isn't that interesting? You know, so often we just sing songs. We just sing any old song. But in heaven, they will sing a song only if it is relevant to them. What an amazing fact that is. Even if we remember when, when Jesus was chosen as the Lamb, who was worthy to open up the scroll, heaven came up with a new song that day. Because until that day, they did not have, a, a, they did not see who would be worthy. And so we conclude uh, this segment uh, looking at the 144,000, a great revival. You know, one of the darkest times of the earth, is, as uh, Matthew 24, 14 says, but a return to God during this time. Even through the darkness, God is working. That is the faithfulness of God. God does not let go of the earth. He does not abandon the earth. He does not abandon you and me. That even in the most darkest place, the darkest season, God is sending His witnesses so that many, many thousands, millions, would come into the kingdom of God. And our encouragement today is we can be a witness for Jesus today. We don't need to wait for the 144,000. I do not think none of us would be included in that 144,000. But yet, 
we can still be a witness and share about the bridegroom as the bridegroom keeps welcoming his bride and preparing his bride for that great harvest and that great feast for eternity.